Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com. And today we're gonna to answer this question that came in today. I call this an Ask Dr. A question. Um, talking to a doctor, he sent me a case, we were discussing it, it was like an eight-year-old. She just had generalized constricted arches, class one, no issues with vertical, nice overjet, nice overbite. The only issue this patient had, nice profile, was that she just had generalized crowding, constricted arches, just probably maybe due to habits, maybe just due to a soft diet um, when she was little. Maybe she wasn't breastfed, maybe she was bottle fed, I don't know the reason, but you know, she had maybe six to eight millimeters of crowding per arch, constricted arches. Anyways, so the doctor said, and this is a really great doctor who knows a lot about ortho, but the um, doctor said, well, why can't we just put in space maintainers? And I was like, well, what's that gonna do? So let's talk about that. What is a space maintainer? So there's lots of reasons that you use space maintainers in pediatric dentistry and also in orthodontics. Um, obviously, in pediatric dentistry, people put them in when you have early loss of a tooth. You, know, you have to pull it out due to decay or something like that. Um, and you don't want the other teeth to slide around. I mean, to me, I only put them in in situations where there's a loss of an E. So an E is, or if it's like crazy early and we had a loss of a D or a C, not D, um, like really, really young patient, like a two-year-old. Um, but um, an E is your, your A, your J, your K, and your T, um, or your upper, well, one of your, any of your primary second baby molars, the two-year-old molars, that's an E. So that's when I put those in. And that would make sense in that. But the problem is, and you know, there's banded loops, there's lingual arches, there's nances, there's TPAs. Those are probably the most common types of space maintainers. Unilateral, bilateral, but there's also, that's fixed. There's also removable space maintainers. Um, obviously in ortho, we don't use banded loops because it has nothing to do with ortho. Um, but so for this patient, I was you know, trying to get him to think a little bit about this. Okay, what would happen? I mean, first of all, what type of space maintainer are you talking about? Because there's no teeth missing, you know, no abnormal teeth missing that should be there. It's not like we had an early loss of a tooth. So why would we put in a space maintainer? I mean, sometimes I'll put in space maintainers in mixed dentition kids if we already have proper width of the jaws, they're developed transversely to the width I want, because if I put something in like a TPA, a Nance or a lingual arch, it has a, has a transverse component. So it's gonna maintain the transverse. Well, naturally the tongue, if it's positioned properly, should be expanding the arches. We want the tongue to expand the arches naturally. And if we put something in that braces the arches, it's not gonna expand naturally, which is actually bad, it's actually worse. So we don't wanna do that. Only other reason, if I had a patient, like I mentioned, that had the proper width already, whether we didn't expand our first or just patient came with the proper width, is I'd put it in if there was a missing tooth, a missing E, like I mentioned, your AJ, K or T, hopefully I got those right. Um, baby second molar, two-year-old molar, if the transverse was right. I will not put them in if the transverse is not right. You gotta correct the transverse first. And that is the number one thing that I see pediatric dentists do wrong, wrong, wrong. They just, you know, they're placing space maintainers, you know, not, band and loops, fine. But I'm talking about bilateral space maintainers that protect the transverse. Um, only other way to do it is, let's say we had a patient that was slight class two or slight class three. And I'm talking like slight, like we don't need growth modification. We're looking at the staff and the profile and I don't need to grow a lower jaw. I don't need to grow an upper jaw. I don't, I don't retract upper jaws. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in anything retraction, only forward ortho, pro, you know, protrusiveness, pro moving things forward when needed. Um, so in that situation, in a slight, like, class two patient that didn't need growth of the mandible but just maybe had some slippage class two dental of the upper molars forward into an e space or class two patient that maybe was two millimeters class two or edge to, even up to edge to edge edge to edge class two end to end end on class two you know i might put in a nance on top because the nice thing about that is it maintains the e space it'll brace 
if the transverse was already corrected and perfect, right? Not if the jaw was narrow, not if we had crowding, if the arches were developed properly. I could put in an ants or a TPA and it'll brace and hold those sixes or three and 14 so that they don't slip forward when you lose A and J or upper E's so that you maintain that class one. Um, because the lower ones, when you lose the lower E's, those will move forward a little bit and then it'll, in an end on case, in a flush terminal plant case, it will actually turn into class one if you brace the top ones. And we do the opposite with the class three. With the class three, we'll put in a lingual arch on the lower. Um, if the patient is like edge to edge or slight class three and if the patient did not need a protraction face mac. We looked at the CEF, we got the CEF numbers, we looked at the profile, we didn't feel like we need um, to protract the maxilla, we ran the numbers, the airway is good. We already have the right transverse, I and mean, it's a little less of an issue on the lower than it is on the upper, because the lower tends to follow the upper. When you expand the upper, the lower often rolls out. But So I don't want to trap a lower arch if the molars are rolled in. I would want to upright those molars first and then put in that lingual arch. So anyways, to answer his question, the answer was, no, we don't want to put in a space maintainer in this case. We want to develop the arches. That's the only option, you know? Um, and then, you know, if you wanted to put space maintainers in for kicks and giggles, I'm probably not going to do, do much. But, you know, if the patient was class one, I don't see the point. But be my guest. All right. Thanks so much.